Hey guys and thanks for tuning in to my channel as this is my first video these videos are not gonna be scripted or anything um, I'm still working out the kinks of my camera setup lighting and everything so please bear with me um, today we will be building a DIY kit from eBay that I got it's a digital clock kit which has a thermometer and the light sensor as well I got it for like five pounds five pounds eleven sterling um, from a guy I'm probably gonna link uh, in the description so let's get started and we'll see from there and for the first components that I figured I could I should put in are the resistors um, doesn't really matter which ones I'll try the 330 ohm resistors first so I don't cut the leads shorter because I'm gonna have to cut them once more anyway so no use cutting them twice I just pulled them out of these these holders there we go um, I believe we have a couple of extra resistors just in case but um, yeah we can start so the way I do this I just bend them like this should be fine enough find the hole through the hole nice and snug hold it and just bend the leads outwards a bit so that so that they stay in place I don't know if you can see I'm actually filming with my phone as this is an experimental video anyway uh, we'll see how it turns out um, yeah I'll keep on going Now, doesn't that look nice? Yes, it does. Okay, now we have a lot of leads here. There's gonna be some soldering involved in this kit, but if you're here, you probably know that, if you're watching this. Now, my soldering iron is heated up already. I'm using a uh, Oh, what's it called? Chisel tip. Chisel tip iron. Yep, there we go, focused. Um, I found that it works works quite nice. Uh, it can touch the pad and the lead at the same time quite comfortably. I've set it at 320 maybe, 15 Celsius. Uh, found that that works also quite good for me and we can start soldering I'm using a lead based solder 60% uh, tin 40% lead with flux in it uh, this solder is I believe 0.88 of a millimeter it would have been nicer if it had something smaller because these le these uh, through holes are quite small but I don't think it's gonna be a problem last time when I was building this kit uh, I was using lead free solder the one the cheap one that you get with the uh, that you buy at, at the Chinese shops you know 
and that was one of the things that that was the problem as well with the whole kit building so I'll just apply some solder here and looks nice that's one and that's two I'll just go through these might fast forward just because it's a boring part of the video or maybe it's not I will see but yeah I'll soldier on let's inspect that everything is still in place still flush yeah the solder joints look reasonably good all right i'm gonna have to take my word for it i'm gonna have to get better, better lighting here definitely but yeah, I'm satisfied. Now I'm gonna cut off the leads. Auto focus. You can do it. Yeah, got it. I'm just using regular uh, pliers, which are a bit magnetic. I have to degauss them. But. I like to cut the leads one at a time, even if there's like the temptation to go like this, but no, I like to cut them one at a time. Oh, there I went, and when I cut them. I don't cut all the way to the solder, I leave just a tiny bit outside so as I won't break the solder joints or anything like that. But this looks nice and flush. This looks nice and flush indeed. Uh, the reason why you can't leave that much outside is because of these guys they have to have space when you put them inside if they want to go inside huh? are they gonna go yep yeah if you see there's there's plenty of clearance there so it won't be an issue now i shall proceed to put in the 10k resistors into the board and solder them in nice and flush and ready for the next challenge for the next one I've decided to you to put in the IC holders I'm not gonna put the ICs in yet I'll leave these for the end don't know why but probably the best that way um, 
IC holder, if you see, there's a small bump right here, right here, that's not there on the other side. Now that bump needs to correspond to this bump over here. Well, doesn't really matter that much on the IC holder as it matters on the actual IC. So, am I going to have to? No! This went in well. This went in perfectly. I'll just put it down. No, I won't. One more time. Yes, it is inside. Now, the tricky part. I'm just gonna... I don't like doing this, but... I'm just gonna solder in one joint a bit. And the other joint as well. So when I soldered, well, at least one joint, just a tiny bit, it helps to keep it in place for the real sol soldering. I'm gonna put something underneath here. Don't know what. Maybe a fuse to keep it balanced. Yeah, fuse works fine. I had one laying around here somewhere it's blown anyway but that's for another project okay let's start soldering So that's the IC holder soldered. Let's go into the next one. Check if everything is nice and flush. Looks like it. Yep. Nice. And then proceed to solder the next the rest of them by the way let me just tell you something about my background while you're watching this if you're interested um, electronics are not my profession or I haven't learned any of this at school the rules like my hobby or my passion, whatever you can call it. Um, I learned everything from either by doing or watching other people do it, either online or from my parents and grandparents or other people I've met during my life. But yeah, this is something I do out of passion and something I love doing so if I make some mistakes and you see that dude what are you doing feel free to comment down there down in the comment section below um, I'm open always to any kind of criticism be it constructive or <laughs> deconstructive I can take it. Um, oh yeah. So two ICs are done. Well, let's do the little buzzer thingy. Um, there's a seal on the buzzer, which you can take off. I'm not going to take it off. I don't like the sound that this buzzer makes so uh, 
there's a plus side on this side and also the longer lead if you can see is plus also and that goes on the plus side on the on the board so nothing really complicated so far um, yeah I'll put it in uh, I'm gonna solder one lead first this one or not try and bend the leads a bit just a tiny bit so that they stay in place yeah let's check if everything's flush yeah should be fine and proceed to solder this in now because my battery died I have one more cable going to my phone which is a pain in the butt because it obstructs my soldering hand a tiny bit but what can you do that's why I'm reaching around for my soldering iron like that check if these look good they look fine they look fine to me yeah they look good nice and cone shaped that's what I like if it's bubble shaped then you probably have a cold solder joint might be good but probably best to um, Probably best to fix it while you see it, not when you can. Well, the buzzer actually doesn't really matter if it's working or not, at least for me. I'm probably not going to use it anytime soon. Okay, let's go on to the battery holder, I guess. Um, battery holder, battery holder. Is there any specific way to put it in? Um, yeah. Two holes here and one plate on the left side so it should go in like this and the battery is gonna slide from this side so it's just gonna slide in Oops. it's really fidgety ah, ah, got it Nope, I don't. It's on the wrong way around. One more time. Ah, this time it is okay. I'll proceed to solder it in. Nothing special. This battery holder holds quite well. The leads are bent out outwards already. So, no real problems. Um, let's see if this goes smoothly or not. Oh, that looks good. Other side. Uh, yeah, it's good enough for me. Yes, looks good. Solder went through. Looks good. Battery is gonna slide in just like so. Okay, next we'll use the input port for the USB. Uh, there's no nothing really special about this port. Uh, there's four pins they go in uh, there's three pins actually sorry and this is the only way this can go in no other way so you can't mess it up three pins here um, yeah we'll see how this goes 
because these are a bit uh, stronger leads. Um, we'll see how my soldering iron can handle this. Heat it up. Come on, heat up. It's really taking. Yeah, that one's good. I just put some solder on for better thermal transfer. Yeah, that one looks good. And the last one, put some solder on the tip. Uh, yeah, and that one looks good as well. That one went nicely. I don't know if you can see. Come on, focus. Yeah. They look fine to me. Looks good. I'm probably gonna cut the leads off a bit here as well because I don't want them touching the displays so I'm gonna be gentle and cut the ends off ah. if I can cut them off anyways that's one close your eyes for this because this flies everywhere that's two or way wear eye protection but i'm not yeah that's better that's nice and flush there's gonna be space for space for the display yeah i've decided to move the camera a bit closer so it's easier for you guys to see everything that's happening um, hopefully this is gonna be good okay what next what next um, let's put in the small capacitors right here so there's let's see one two three three capacitors oh, actually the kit has four capacitors but one is extra so I'm gonna put that aside so I'll put them in the polarity doesn't matter so it doesn't really matter which way around they go 104 22 22 and that's it Bend the leads out a bit so they stay in place and proceed to soldier them in. Awesome. <clears throat> Keep in mind if you're new to soldering, I learned that the hard way as well. <laughs> um, when you heat up the pad and the lead, you need to touch them both before you put the solder on. So you heat them up both first, put the solder on, take out the solder, leave the, leave the soldering iron on the pad and the lead for a second or two and just take it off. And then you should see that nice cone shape 
of the solder on the lead and on the actual pad. That's when you know you have a good solder joint. For that you need well, a good soldering iron. Not necessarily a very expensive one. Just just the one that gets the job done. This is not heated up yet. Nope. It's getting there. Yeah, last time I'm going to show you what soldering iron I used. Yeah, this is not heated up at all yet. It's not taking solder. Well, actually, I can show you that right now on, uh, until this heats up. So this is my old soldering iron that I found somewhere um, in the trash. It's, a, it's this kind of soldering iron which has like one copper uh, wire that gets heated up and you press this to the to the pad and the lead and you make a solder joint but this one was really bad really bad condition and it was either getting overheat too hot or not hot enough and as well i was using <coughs> lead free solder the one that you get at chinese shops which is just just horrible don't use it anymore any uh, anytime this is by the base solder um, whenever you can if you can use that solder it's not that expensive it's basically based up of 40% uh, lead and 60% tin and it has flux inside the solder um, solder wire so it helps um, clean the oxidation and merge this the pad the lead and the solder together very very well so you don't use uh, ones that don't have flux in it also it should be good now I might have to turn up the temperature a bit I put it down Let's see. Yeah. No. Nope. One more time. Put it in. Take it out. Put in the soldering iron. Put in the solder. Take it out. That's it. And the only way you can learn is by practicing so that's basically what I, I bought a soldering iron after I um, after I failed with the other one it wasn't that expensive it was what was it about twenty dollars something like that uh, from a local shop I don't think it was even that much. I'm, I'm not sure. And it has adjustable temperature. Well, sort of. I'm not sure it's the correct values that say there on the base, on the base station of the soldering iron. But <clears throat> for now, I'm quite happy with it. It's a copy of ZD99. I'm gonna link it down below as well for you guys to know what I'm using. And I'm just blabbering on. These solder joints look good. 
to me. They look fine to me. I'm gonna cut off the leads and proceed to the crystal. There we go. It's all the leads taken out, cropped off, I mean. And the next, we'll put in, other way around actually, the crystal. This guy is also not polarized, so it doesn't matter which way around it goes in. Uh, the only thing you have to uh, watch out for is it's gonna be quite sensitive to uh, temperature. So don't keep your soldering iron on that long on it now when you put it in don't put it in all the way yet because it has to lay flat on on the board that's how it's designed actually it doesn't really matter but bend it down a bit so it lies well nearly flush to the board and almost in this little box it's supposed to be in and when you do that first <laughs> first before you turn it over make sure you spread the leads out on the other side so hold it spread the leads out so it doesn't fall out Gently put it down and it should be fine like this. So <clears throat> try not to keep it on very long. That's one. And that's two. That's plenty. Let me just check. Yep. They're fine. If you see if you can see there's like a cone shape to them. They go out on the on opposite sides, but that's that's really fine. Okay, so next we're gonna put in the tactile switches they go on the left side of the board there's four pins um, focus there's four pins and there's only one way to put them in so you can't mess it up uh, anything can be messed up that's what I've learned from my previous <clears throat> mistakes but that's why I got another kit and decided to make a video about it so yeah I'll probably be making some uh, videos building kits or small electronic fixes uh, stuff. I'm not sure yet where this channel will go in the future, but um, we'll see. These are also a bit larger leads, so you need to be careful. I'm going to put on some solder on the soldering iron, put it on the lead and the pad for better thermal conducting and then take it off. Take it off. Just 
put it in. And take it off. These guys look good to me. They're quite big leads, so it's probably a good thing that I put enough solder on it. Um, let's go with the other one. I'm not using any fume extractor yet. Not because I don't want to, because it's not that much of a priority to me yet. I'm gonna get one eventually, or make one. It might be an interesting project. But I try not to breathe in the fumes. I don't breathe or blow them away. Um, these are actually fumes from from the flux that is inside the the actual uh, solder wire. It's not lead, if you if you think that, but most of you most of you know that, anyways. Um, yeah, we're making good progress. What is left? Um, let's go with the transistors now when putting in the transistors you need to keep an eye on on a couple of things uh, first of all um, I'll just get this in focus the the box that's uh, drawn around has um, rough edges on this side. I don't know how how I can say it. And the transistor itself is also built like that. So it's straight on one side and round on the other side. So this round side goes on the bottom side. Now <clears throat> For these transistors to go in, <coughs> you're gonna need to <coughs> excuse me. You're gonna need to bend the leads out a little bit, just these two leads, so that they fit inside these holes. One, two, three, and just push them in gently, gently because they are they can be. Um, fragile components and I've made a mess last time because when trying to desolder it or something like that I'm not sure one of the legs broke off they're not that expensive components but you don't have spares in the in the kit so be gentle when you're pushing these inside and also like take care that the rounded edge is on the bottom side here I'll go ahead and put in the other ones as well now all that's left on this side of the board at least is the photoresistor and the thermistor <coughs> sorry excuse me and the putting in the ICs but we'll leave that for the end now as far as I've seen on the images um, not everyone does it like this but the photoresistor and thermistor need to go outside of the encasing so 
I need to figure out how long they need to be to actually get out of the encasing. So, what I'm gonna do is uh, this might be stupid, but who cares? Just mock put in the encasing. <laughs> Where does this go? This is going to be an interesting build. Oh yeah, like this, found it. So this is the bottom. And this is the top. Now, if you see these two holes, this is where those two sensors need to go out. So, if this is probably gonna be like this or not, oh god, interesting. Uh, they probably, well, the mister goes here again doesn't matter which way around if i bend it up slightly like this push it through this yeah it clears it quite quite easily and I don't don't mind if it's all the way out here um it seems like a good place i might Put it in a bit more so it's like this like this and yeah that should be fine so uh, what can i say about a centimeter is the length of the lead that should be left outside and just put these away yeah something about a centimeter same goes for the thermistor I'm gonna just bend it carefully okay push it in again doesn't matter which way around it goes leave about a centimeter and like so well, it's not the most beautiful thing in the world but it's gonna have to do actually I might bend this in just a tiny bit more good thing about having another build making another build is I have <laughs> most of the spare parts from the first build I built so I have a thermistor and I have a photoresistor in case these ones break or something but yeah yeah that should be fine that should be quite fine like so <clears throat> okay i'm gonna proceed to soldier min Shouldn't be a big problem. Nah, it's gonna be good. And that is the 
first side of the board complete except the ICs and now we can start putting in the displays on the other side of the board as I mentioned first to go with the dot on the bottom side third one goes with the dot on the top and the last one goes with the dot on the bottom side and you're going from left to right based on these buttons which are on the right side so we're gonna put them in one by one bottom um, yeah you just thread them through one side other side make sure it's nice and flush nice and flush as flush as it can be actually but yeah that looks good to me Now, these look nice already. Um, I can start soldering them in. And there we go, all the leads, all the displays are soldered in. This one as well, I believe. The rest look fine, well, this one's fine, but I don't believe in this one. Just desolder it real quick. This is so awkward. Probably won't see anything. Actually, I'll use soldering wick for this job. Soldering week. And resolder that one joint. It's really an awkward place next to this. So probably put this in last. If you ask me. Yeah, put this in this guy in last. As you can see, the displays are mounted properly this time, in proper order. Everything is soldered in nicely. No bad solder joints, I've checked. I ran out of battery, again. Uh, that's why I had to pause the video. But yeah, now comes, well, not gonna say the most tricky part because I haven't tried uh, I haven't tried um, assembling the encasing but installing the ICs which is always a pain in the you know where because I'm not actually sure why that is when you take out the ICs you can see that the leads are facing a bit outwards and if you try to put them in it just won't go so
so you need to bend the leads inwards and you need to be very careful not to bend them too much because then you have to bend them back and bending them forwards and backwards can cause them to break. I have an extra uh, IC and timer chip uh, for this one, for this guy, but I don't want to break this one either. So what I do is I put it on the table, nice and flat, and bend them together, not while holding the leads. So just gently first time. Try the other one. Like this. Other side. Huh? That's one. That's it. Hopefully the other one goes easier. What do you say? Let's try it out. And now, for the moment of truth, basically, we're gonna test it out if it works. Hopefully it's gonna work. If not, well, what can we do? I'll just get another one and make it. Um, yeah. So, USB power, connect. Oh wait, one thing before this. I'll put in the battery. Well, that was close. <laughs> now, <clears throat> if I remember correctly, three volt battery. Oh, I think it goes in this way. Hopefully, the battery you just push it in gently, like so. Uh, I think it only uh, is used to um, keep the time when you when you take it out of power. So here we go. Three, two, one, and it's alive! It works! It works. I hope the first one works as well. Yes, it does. Awesome. And now you'll see why the this is needed. If you check the difference. See how better it is, how much better it is. All the digits seem to work for now um, and yeah all that's left is the enclosure so we'll start that right now now for this next step we're gonna use the provided panels for the housing the filter 
screen, whatever you call it, and the provided screws. So first off, we need to take off these, um, this protective coating of the of the screen. So I'm gonna proceed. I'm gonna try and do this as non-destructively as I can. Um, let's see if I. If I start it out like this, one side, yeah, with a sharp knife, comes off quite easily. You need to be careful not to tear it because of the rough edges. There we go, that's one down, and the other side as well. And there we go. All the pieces are out of their protective coatings. And now we can go on to the assembly. Now this assembly is going to be difficult for me as well. Because this is the only part that I haven't actually done before. So we'll see how it goes. But... Let's first see which side is which. Um, I believe this is the bottom side. Hopefully. This one sh should be the front or back. But wait, no, this is the back. Yeah, and this is the back. Slots in like this. Bottom side goes there. Front side goes here. And I don't know if you can see. The front side clips into the bottom side. Like so. And is a bit raised. So there's extra plastic underneath so that way the whole clock is raised at a slight angle from the ground on the front side okay yeah. so this is the back side this is the top this was the top for sure because of these holes and it goes in only one way yes Now, if it goes in like this, then the buttons are on this side, so this one should be the right side. Yes. And this one should be the left side, because of the little hole. Now, let me try something, <laughs> might be a bit foolish to try but nah it's not gonna work because of these antennas I tried to pull it put it in from this side but it's not gonna work like that only like so yeah let's see if we had enough clearance yep yeah. the sensors get out of the casing correctly Try putting it this side as well. Well, that's how it should look. 
This is gonna probably go horribly wrong in a few seconds. Uh, no, I can't let it go. If I let go, everything is gonna fall apart. Well, I believe it's gonna fall apart anyway. So, let's see if I can do this. So, the way it works, as far as I saw on the pictures, is you have the screws. And you thread the screws through the hole, through the little holes. They're quite small. I'm going to need a screwdriver. One moment, please. There we go. Oh god, that was painful. Painful to watch. Well, it's complete, but... Do you see something missing? This needs to be on the inside, unfortunately. <sighs> oh well. What can we do? It's just two screws. Well, that's not that big of a deal. And there we have it, our DIY clock kit is built, it actually looks real nice, the enclosure as well, all fitted in together as it should. Now all that is left is for us to program this thing. So when you first turn it on. Um, you should hold both buttons for five seconds. It says 7.59 and five seconds later, eight o'clock. Okay, now that means the the clock has been reset and we will proceed to set it, set it up. So first uh, we need to set up time and date. Um, so press the top button which is like the function button I think and set the time first, so hours. So now it is 8, so 12.59, 8 
20. Fifty-five. You can hold it and it goes faster. Four. Let's we'll check again. Fifty-six. Exactly. Um, now this setting is for the alarm. Uh, when you want your alarm to be set. Um, to set the alarm, press the function button once, so to set the hours, function button again, to set the minutes, come on, focus please, focus please, doesn't want to focus on the display, there we go. And when you set the hours and minutes, you can, let me just check. Press this button, the bottom one, to toggle the alarm clock on and off. Now, next is the hourly chime which means that uh, you can set it to ring once every hour from 8 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock in the evening. Now, I'm not gonna set that. Well, it's set from 8 in the morning to 8 in the evening, but if you press the bottom button again, it turns off the hourly chime. And that is the hours set. Now, uh, if you press the button button, uh, you have temperature readout. Now, you can also correct this with the top button. At the, at the moment, it is 25 degrees here. So this. And if you click again, you have the 805. What is this? Yeah, this is the date, the month, and the day. So, month today is May. Well, not actually the day that you're going to be watching this, but May the 17th. And this is the day of the week, so again, press the top button to select it and the but bottom button to change it. Day of the week, it's Wednesday. And that's it. Your alarm, uh, your DIY kit is completed, set up and working properly. Well, at least mine is. Hopefully yours is as well. Yours is as well. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and hopefully I'll be making kits like this and more interesting stuff on my channel in the future. Um, that's all for now. See you guys in the next one. Cheers.